One of the concepts that we spend a lot of time thinking about is multi-agent architectures. One of the key components of multi-agent architectures is the ability for these agents to communicate freely and effectively between each other. With that in mind, today we're excited to announce Command, a new type in LangGraph that lets you more easily create really expressible and controllable communication between different agents or different nodes in your graph. Specifically, it allows you to return from a node not only the state update, but also which nodes can be executed next. This allows you to effectively create edgeless graphs. Let's take a look at this in action. Here we have a how-to guide for how to combine control flow and state updates with command. If we take a look here, we can see the core idea. Basically, we have this node, and inside this node, we're returning this command type. And this command type has two main components. It has some other things, but these are the two main components. One, it has an update parameter. This is the state update that we apply. This will be applied just like any state update that's normally returned from our nodes. But second, it has this go to parameter. Here's where we can specify the other node or nodes that we want to go to. When we specify a string like this, this just means that we're going to another node in the graph. We can also specify other things like a list of strings and go to multiple nodes. Let's take a look at this in action. We're gonna to try to build an agent that doesn't use a conditional edge, but rather uses this command to route between a tool node where we're gonna be executing tools and the end of the agent. So to get started, let's import some standard things that we're gonna to wanna to use. We're gonna be using chat anthropic, the anthropic model, but you can use any model you want. We're going to be importing some other standard things like literal, which we will be using to do typing, tool to create tools, um, start, end, state graph, messages, state, tool node. These are all built in uh, abstractions for working with graphs in LangGraph. And then we have this new thing from LangGraph.types import command. This is the command that we're going to be using. Next, let's define some tools for the agent to use. We're going to create a mock search tool for querying the web. We're going to respond as if it's querying for what the weather is. And then we're just going to create a tool node with this tool. Let's now create our model. We're going to be using chat anthropic. We'll use Claude three sonnet and we'll bind the tools above to the model. This will let the model know that it has the option to call these tools if it wants to. Now we're going to define the function. That's going to be the node that calls this model that makes up the graph. So here we've got this call model node. It takes in this state and it returns this command literal tools in end. So tools in end are the two names of the nodes in the graph that we're going to be able to go to from here. Inside this function, what we're going to do is we're going to get the messages and we're going to pass that to the model. Then based on the response, we're going to determine the next node to go to. If there are tool calls, the next node is going to be tools. If there's not, it's going to be end. And then we're going to return this command where we go to the next node and we update the messages with this response. Now let's build our graph. So here we can create state graph with the messages state. We'll define the tool nodes that we're going to cycle between agent, which is the call model, and then tools, which is our tool node. We're going to add a starting edge from start to agent. And then we're going to add this edge from tools. It's wrapping back around to agent. You'll notice that we don't have any edge or conditional edges going away from agent. That's because it's defined inside the node itself. Let's compile this. And now we can start interacting with it. I'm going to ask a question like, what is the weather in SF? I'm going to pass in debug equals true. This will let me see what's going on under the hood as it runs in the notebook. But I'm also going to check Langsmith in a little bit just to show what it looks like under the hood. So we can track what it's doing and we can see that at the end, it's got this human message, this AI message where it's calling the tool, the tool message itself, and then it's getting a final response. Let's take a little bit of a closer look by looking at Langsmith. Here we've got the trace. The interesting thing is inside this first node, if we click into it, it's this agent node and we have as input first, just a human message. We can see the output. We've got this update step, which is the message to update on. But then we also have 
this go to, this is referring to the node to go to next. And we can see, in fact, that the next node that we go to is tools. If we look at this the second time it's called, it's now got more input because the messages have accumulated. The output is now this final kind of like content. And if we scroll down, we can see the go to is end, to end. So this is what's going on under the hood when we use command. Another thing I want to show is how to use this in a multi-agent setup, because I think this is where it starts to get really fun and you can start to layer these agents on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is define one main agent that as an option can hand off the conversation to this weather agent. Here's the tool we define, transfer to weather agent. If you notice, we don't actually do anything inside the tool. That's because what we're actually going to do is we're going to handle any of the transfer before we ever get to the tool node. You'll notice that we still bind these tools to this model, the chat anthropic model, but that's just so the model can call the tool. We're not actually going to execute it though. How are we going to do that? Let's take a look. We're going to define the call model node in this way. We're going to take in the messages. We're going to pass it to the model. If there are any tool calls that are made, and again, the only tool that we're binding is this transfer to weather agent. So if there are any tool calls that are made, we're going to go to the weather agent node. Otherwise, we're going to go to end. You'll notice that when we go to the end, we actually update the messages with the response. When we go to the weather agent, we don't update it at all. So the weather agent will get only the messages that have come in so far. It won't get any of this initial response. And you can see that up here, we type the function as returning weather agent or end. If we put this all together, it'll look something like this. We create this graph and we add two nodes. First is agent. This is the call model node that we have above. And then the second is this weather agent. This is the graph that we defined before. So we now have this separate agent that's been a node in this main agent. We're going to add a start edge. This is starting at the agent node. And then we're going to compile this into the multi-agent graph. Let's kick this off over the same inputs as before. Let's track what happens. As we can see, it starts off in the agent node. But almost immediately, it goes into the weather agent node. That's because the overall agent is calling the tool that says to transfer, hand off to this weather agent. We can see from there that it starts to do its traditional kind of like tool calling. Let's take a look at what it looks like in Langsmith. We can see that first, we call the regular agent. If we click in, we can see that the output doesn't have any updates. It just passes go to weather agent. We then go into the weather agent and the weather agent returns the messages that we expect to see. Hopefully this is a good introductory video to how to use this new command type. We have more documentation on all the advanced features you can do, like sending to multiple nodes so that they run in parallel or jumping and handing off to not a node in your current graph, but to a node in the parent graph, which is really useful for hierarchical agents. I'd encourage you to check this out. We're going to be doing a lot more with multi-agent things. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Thanks for watching.